Is there any money to be made flipping houses in rural areas? You dang right there is. In fact, there's an entire fortune to be made in the rural parts of this country. Too often I see real estate investors, they ignore anything outside of a population center and they're missing the boat. I'm gonna break it down for you in this video. I'm gonna share with you opportunities and the pitfalls of investing in rural areas. In fact, I've done a lot of deals uh, out in the sticks in the middle of nowhere. Recently, a, a deal in Ohio, one of my apprentices named Joe, a uh, lead came in, it was far away from his normal area, and he was a little concerned about it. He said, Phil, this is a long drive, and I've never been out there, and there doesn't, I don't think there's any, any industry or any jobs out there. Really are concerned about doing something right out that, this way. And I said, Joe, this thing's a home run. I'll fund the deal. So he picked it up for 100000 I funded it. He ended up putting a lot of work into it, and it took a little while because it was a long distance for him. New roof, new HVAC, uh, uh, redid the kitchen, redid the baths. In the end, uh, it just sold for 273000 after closing costs, commissions, he gave the, uh, the buyers a, a credit, uh, of course the hard money lending fees, just shy of a $100,000 net profit in the upper 90s. That was a big deal. Uh, one that uh, one of my apprentices is working on right now in Pennsylvania, uh, he picked it up for 125. He was pretty concerned about doing it because he thought that there wouldn't be any buyers. And uh, and I looked at the deal. It was a really well built farmhouse. Had uh, a big barn on it, uh, five acres, nice acreage too. And I said, No, Dave, this thing, this thing's gonna sell fast. You would be surprised how many people want properties like this. And he said, Phil, you don't understand. This is Pennsylvania. This is Amish country. Uh, nobody's gonna want it. I said, Dave, this is a real deal. So he picks it up and uh, he does a little bit of cosmetic to it before he gets it officially on the MLS. He puts a sign out front and uh, sure enough, this is a true story, <laughs> guy came up in a, in a horse and buggy, an Amish individual, and, uh, and, and made an offer two fifty. dollars and uh, the guy's getting a farm credit loan and that should be closing in about two weeks. So that deal is going to make over $100,000, just shy of, just, just about like one hundred one is the net profit. So is there money to be made in rural areas? You dang right. In fact, the, the deal that got me out of being homeless and living out of my truck way back in the day, that was in the middle of nowhere. I made over $56,000 on that deal with my first deal with my mentor. So I, I'm kind of partial. I see the opportunity. In fact, let's turn our attention to where these opportunities are. The first reason why I absolutely love investing in rural areas is the lack of competition. Specifically, those are the people that are either trying to wholesale, they're trying to market for motivated sellers, they're applying creative real estate techniques. That, that's not happening in rural areas. And so it allows you to be the big fish in a small pond. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't any sucker investor buyers out there in the, in the rural areas. There still are. There still are those good old boys with mattress money that still want to go buy a beat up house and fix it up and resell it. But when it comes to the competition for you to get to the best leads, they're pretty much non-existent. So I love that, love that about rural areas. The next thing I love about rural investing is that you have limited inventory for buyers to choose from. So when you're providing inventory, you're selling a home, you typically are one of the few that is trying to sell something. So you don't have to compete against a bunch of other houses in a subdivision. Limited inventory makes it easier to sell to buyers. There are buyers in rural areas. Make no mistake, there are still people always buying houses. I don't care what the economy, what the market's like, there's still always buyers. But the key is you don't have to compete with a bunch of other houses because you might be one of the few that actually is out there that's a nice enough home that a family or somebody wants to move into. Now, in addition to limited inventory, inventory, I want to talk about the fact that it's got the ability for you to do what I call creative terms, which is something that almost is non-existent in rural areas, but is under huge demand. I'm talking about offering a rent to own or offering owner financing. This is where someone comes in with five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to put down, but they don't have to qualify for a bank loan when they when they move in the property. It's a huge opportunity. We do a lot of that in rural areas because the, in, in rural areas they don't have a lot of inventory and they don't have a lot of these creative term inventories. Whereas in certain uh, major cities and uh, major metropolitan areas, there's a lot of other investors offering rent to own or owner financing. Not so in the in the rural areas. I also love that they have special loan programs for those properties in the in the rural areas, such as USDA rural loans. Uh, Farm Credit does loans. Sometimes you'd, uh, United States Agricultural Department does loans. There's special loan programs which make it easier to sell to certain people that have uh, you know, less than perfect credit, that don't have the perfect loan application. That also makes it easier to sell these houses because now there's more loan options. 
A huge opportunity in rural areas is mobile homes, specifically mobile homes on their own land. And if you have a situation where it's considered a mobile home and there's something you have to file with the county or there's some updates you have to do, like straps here in Florida, you can convert that to real property from a mobile home and now all of a sudden all these new loans come available and you're able to add tremendous value. We're doing a lot of mobile home deals. We like it when they're on their own land. When it's in a mobile home park, you're better off owning the park because the mobile home itself is typically not something that's going to make you a lot of money. Sometimes, but usually you want to be in a situation where it's on its own land and so what can happen is you convert it to real property from a mobile home. Huge opportunity here, especially in light of the fact that we have such a crisis of affordable housing going on. Statistics are showing that mobile home sales are just ballooning right now. They're booming because people can't afford stick-built homes and uh, mobile homes can be just an ideal solution for a lot of people that want to be homeowners. So, big opportunities here too. And I know the title of this video is Flipping Houses in Rural Areas, but let's not forget land. There's so much opportunity in flipping land and subdividing land in rural areas. In fact, I've got a great video called 10 Tips for Buying Land. When you're buying land, there are some angles you can take that can make huge amounts of money in the middle of nowhere. And this is not a new concept, by the way. Uh, one of my favorite country music artists, Travis Tritt, had a song many years ago called Country Ain't Country No More. And the chorus goes like this. The back 40 was sold to make up for hard times. And sold by the half acre lot overnight. The houses went up, trees are cut down. There went the finest deer hunting around. Incidentally, uh, deer season is coming up for many of y'all. In fact, muzzleloader uh, season starts tomorrow in North Florida. And deer hunters, they have a lot of money. And there's a lot of deer hunters out there. And deer hunters all want good land with deer on it. There's a lot of opportunity. I know people that do that. They buy land, they, they uh, split it up, and they sell it to deer hunters. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to gonna quit my day job here. But... Um, I hope it gives you a little bit of insight that, look, you know, flipping land in the country is, it's been around a long time. And, uh, you know, I got this guitar in my hand. I was thinking about this. If you're like me when I was first getting started, homeless, living out of my truck, a complete failure, not making any money, um, you know, you, you get down on yourself pretty easily and pretty quickly. And uh, what I used to do is I used to play this song, um, and, it, and it, was, it was my way of just keeping my head positive. And... Um, because I had a lot of negative influences. I had people telling me, you know, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. You got a college degree. Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, I knew it, my passion was going to be real estate investing. I know I had to stick with it. And uh, when I didn't really have any other fans and, and, uh, and I didn't have any, any other encouragers, I, uh, I used to play this song right here, another song by Travis Tripp. I want to be somebody One of these days I'm gonna break these chains I'm gonna be somebody someday You can bet your hard-earned dollar I will Back then I didn't have a really expensive Martin guitar, so that's the other nice thing when you make some money, you get yourself some good instruments. Alright, well, I have absolutely distracted myself here. Let's get back to the focus. Next, let's talk about pitfalls. A huge pitfall with rural area investing has to do with comps. There's going to be a lot less comps. And the properties that you're selling are going to be unique. Some are going to be on more acreage, less acreage. You're going to have a big house, older house, smaller house, big barn, small. I mean, all kinds of things, right, that are going to, that are going to make it more difficult. But that's the key. The difficulty you're going to have with comparing that property to others that have recently sold, everybody else is going to have that problem. The real estate agents in the area are going to have the problem. The homeowners themselves, that's why the Zillows and other AVMs of the world are not going to be able to accurately determine the value. So it's more of an opportunity, in my opinion, than it is a pitfall. It can be a pitfall if you don't study them correctly. I spent a lot of time in my training with my apprentices on this subject of what you do when there's difficult properties to comp. How do you handle those situations? But if you do this right, and that can start with you studying what comps are there. It can also go into you connecting with local agents that have been doing a lot of deals in that area for, for the past 
10, 15, 20 years, you can start to really learn. And the more you learn, the more empowered you are that you can negotiate better, get better deals under contract, and then still make more money. So don't look at this as simply a pitfall. Look at it as an opportunity. Now, in addition to comps, one of the things that you run into with rural properties that you may not have uh, dealt with if you've ever just done deals in the city, and that's going to be you have a, a new set of utility considerations. So I'm going to say utilities here. And that's going to be things like septic. It's going to be things like uh, water or well water. You're then going to have potentially uh, a propane tank for gas. All of a sudden, you've got to uh, deal with these things. And that starts when you purchase, making sure you do a septic inspection. Make sure it perks. Make sure it's functioning correctly. You inspect the well. Inspect the water quality. Right? Make sure that it's not a complete disaster. Because if you have to put in a, an RO system, well, that's going to be big bucks. And then making sure that the propane agreements are current and everything is clear on that front. Understanding some of the utility considerations of the rural side can be a major pitfall if you're first getting started. But you make sure and check all these things before you close and, and you're going to be fine. And you can obviously negotiate with the seller if there's a major problem with the septic or the well or whatnot. Okay, those two things. But also the other consideration, I know we talked about land earlier. Land is also a major pitfall. Land can be a problem with, where, uh, in regards to easements, whether it's in regards to wetlands, whether it's in regards to being in a flood zone, whether it's in regards to new changes that are happening with the county and the road they're putting in. There's all kinds of considerations with land that you have to be concerned with, environmental. And so again, that video on 10 tips for buying land, uh, that can help uh, guide you in the right direction on that particular subject. So uh, land is another big pitfall. But the biggest pitfall of all, it's not making sure you've comped it right, not making sure you've understood the utility situation and, and, and not understand the land. The biggest pitfall of all is when you make the assumption, you assume no buyers. That's the biggest pitfall. Y'all, there are plenty of buyers in rural areas. There's lots more than you think. And so just because they don't have a lot of jobs around there, just because it doesn't look like anybody lives there, doesn't mean you don't have people who want to buy. Look, as people get older, what happens is they go from wanting to live in the city where all the action is, they want to move further and further away. As I've gotten older, I've noticed it happen, right? You have kids, you now want to have more land, you want to have more privacy. That's the role, that's the direction people go in as they get older. And there's a lot of people getting older right now. They want to have more land. And so there is a lot more buyers than you think. So to assume there are no buyers is the biggest pitfall of all. All right, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video on flipping houses in rural areas. It's an absolute home run. In fact, if you have been doing this business for any length of time and you're struggling, you might want to consider instead of pointing your, your guns closer toward an urban area, perhaps turn the other direction and go out a little bit in the country. We had a, an apprentice of mine who was focused in a, in a major metropolitan area. He made some decent money. Uh, made a little over 50000 in the first six months here of 2019, but he wanted to make more, and he was a little frustrated. And I looked at his situation, looked at all the details of his marketing, and I said, you know what you should do? You should focus on this market over here. And he said, Phil, that's, that's like a two-hour drive for me. I said, I know, but is it worth the, the extra two-hour drive if you're going to be making you know, an extra couple hundred thousand dollars a year? He's like, oh, there's not that kind of money out there. Look, I have these discussions with my apprentices, right? They don't believe me. And, uh, and so he started running some marketing um, out, out in, this, uh, in this area that was definitely out in the middle of nowhere. Didn't really have a lot of jobs and whatnot. Had a decent population. And, uh, and the first deal he picked up, true story, he picked it up for $500. Real house. Real house with a yard and a garage. $500. And he flipped it, uh, sold it to an investor for $12,000. And, uh, and then the next deal, he's got under contract now for $40,000. And uh, all day long, it should sell for one thirty. dollars I looked at all the comps and whatnot. It's in good shape, too. A little bit of cosmetics, it should sell for one seventy. dollars And so, uh, voila, it's, it's a long drive for him. But all of a sudden, he, uh, he's going to be in the money in a big, big way. So I hope this encourages you. I hope this excites you, especially if you live out in the sticks, live out in the country. There's plenty of opportunity in your own backyard.
backyard. All right, well, I'm Phil Pustiowski with FreedomMentor.com. You can get access to my book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, absolutely free in these videos. You just click that link right there. Uh, if you have comments, questions, and all those kind of things, put them down below. And if you want to be a part of my apprentice program, where myself, as well as my coaching and mentoring team, we work with people one-on-one, -on -one and we help them become very successful real estate investors, wherever they're planted, whether urban or rural areas, uh, consider my apprentice program, consider applying for that, and uh, that could be a game changer for you. All right, for everybody else, if you already applied, you're already in our program, or uh, you already read my book and all those great things, uh, make sure you watch the video on the 10 tips for buying land. That goes hand-in-hand -hand with this training on investing in rural areas. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next video.